Our fourth uh, presentation is a proclamation to designate May 2022 as Lyme, De Lyme Disease Awareness Month. And this was requested by Supervisor Herity. I understand that Monty Skull, uh, the Executive Director of the National Capital Lyme and Tick-Borne Disease Association is here with us today as well as some others. If you all could uh, all come on down uh, to the podium and while you were doing that, I will recognize Supervisor Herity. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a proclamation to read. Uh, whereas May marks the start of tick season in Northern Virginia and the Fairfax County Health Department and the National Capital Lyme and Tick-Borne Disease Association are among many organizations working to increase awareness and education about the threat it presents. And whereas Lyme disease is the most common vector-borne disease in the United States, and whereas each year approximately 30,000 cases of Lyme disease are reported by state health departments and the District of Columbia with several hundred cases reported in Virginia in the last few years and many cases going unreported. And whereas Lyme disease can take many forms from muscle pain to arthritis to heart disease and Bell's palsy and can carry flu-like symptoms as well as extreme fatigue and whereas individuals can protect themselves by wearing EPA registered repellents such as DEET, performing tick checks after outdoor activities and promptly removing attached ticks. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors on behalf of all residents of Fairfax County does hereby proclaim May 2022 as Lyme Disease Awareness Month in Fairfax County and urges all residents to take actions to prevent uh, and protect against tick-borne illnesses. So moved. Heard the motion and I'm happy to second that along with Supervisor Stork. Uh, discussion on the motion, Supervisor Herity. Uh, yeah, real briefly, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to recognize Lyme Disease Awareness Month again this year. It, it, Lyme, Lyme disease is truly a, a terrible disease and it's become more prevalent in, uh, in Virginia, especially Northern Virginia. And, there, and we're, we're learning of new diseases besides Lyme disease being carried by ticks uh, now, in this, uh, now in this area. So it's, it's more and more people that I've met have been you know, affected by, uh, by, by Lyme. And uh, as residents have gone outside more during the pandemic, the exposure has gone up and the cases have gone up. So uh, awareness is really what this is all about. And uh, we need to, to make sure our residents are aware. I spent a lot of time in the woods and unfortunately, I, pull a tick off myself now and then. Um, so it, it is something you need to, to, to do the checks and wear the preventative. Um, a minute about uh, Nat Cap Lyme. They really have done great work in our region educating residents on how they can uh, protect themselves from Lyme disease. Uh, I'm especially grateful for the materials they've developed to help educate our students because um, they've been out in the woods a lot too. Uh, I've been working with them as well as Laura Jane Cohen and Megan McLaughlin uh, on the FCPS school board to help better educate our kids on the issue. Uh, tick prevention education is especially important for our children as 30% of the, uh, the cases reported by the CDC annually um, are children. So I wanna thank, thank you for all you do to raise awareness and congratulations on the, uh, the work you're doing both at the state level and the local level to, to raise awareness and get things done on Lyme disease. Thank you, Supervisor Herity. Supervisor Stork. Uh, I want to thank Supervisor Herity for, and for bringing this forward because it is one of those, I would say, silent disablers. Um, and I say silent because people don't necessarily recognize the long term and even the, the, the multiple kinds of impacts it has on individuals. Um, as a healthcare provider, uh, I, I've seen that over the years, decades, frankly. Um, and I. It's, I, I like it a little bit to COVID. It maybe doesn't quite have the same um, pervasiveness that COVID might have because it's obviously carried by a, a particular uh, insect. But in this case, what it does to people is what I think we're seeing in the way of long COVID. There's things that, that happen after that tick bite that most people just don't recognize is still part of that, that uh, initial bite. So uh, I, I urge everyone the same thing, which is to check yourself, of course, Get, remove those ticks, but also to treat it and treat it very, very seriously. And because it can have those long-term effects that you you then always will wonder about because it, it, the way it affects your nervous system and other things is is powerful and impactful. And, and again, thank you for bringing this forward to recognize that. Thank you thank all for you. your work. 
Thank you, Supervisor Stork. Um, and let me also uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor Harity, for raising awareness, but also uh, for all of you for being here. Um, I think you know these awareness campaigns, as we said, are so critical. Uh, one of the things that our health department does among the many services it provides to the public is they do have a tick identifier. And so people who do uh, find a tick on themselves, you know, certainly the health department is a resource for them to identify the type of tick and the risks associated with that. But, um, you know, the numbers in our children, of course, are troubling. I know I've, you know, pulled many a tick off kids in my house, uh, especially after soccer practice. Um, and so even in well-mowed areas, um, you know, these kids are still susceptible to ticks. But I also, you know, one thing that hasn't been mentioned here that I think we can't mention enough is the necessity for also for all of us also to check our pets. Um, you know, ticks that were found recently in my home were brought in on the back of our pet greyhound. And those who know greyhounds know they have very little hair. Um, and they, he, you know, he managed to bring ticks into the home. And so while we take our animals for a walk and we come in and check ourselves, uh, we also need to check our pets because that's an entry point uh, for ticks into to too many households. And so uh, just part of the awareness campaign. But again, I want to thank you uh, for being here today and helping us uh, raise awareness in the public. And as Supervisor Stork said, you know, the, the long range pieces of this in some ways are still very unknown. And that makes it similar to COVID. Uh, but also the number of people infected. It's obviously over a lo much longer period than COVID, but I think all of us know someone uh, who has had Lyme disease, which should be, you know, an education for all of us in terms of awareness. And so appreciate all the work that's being done. Uh, with that, um, I think we are ready for a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And please welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Herity and the Board of Supervisors for those kind comments. Uh, before I start, I'd like to introduce my colleagues that are here with me today. Uh, they are seasoned advocates in the field of Lyme education for over a couple of decades. They have been involved here in Fairfax County, Kathy Below and Marjorie Vega. So uh, with that, I'd like to say the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors has once again proclaimed May 2022 as Lyme Disease Awareness Month in the County of Fairfax. The National Capital Lyme Disease Association is grateful to Supervisor Pat Herity and the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors for its continued commitment of raising awareness of tick-borne diseases. For the past 12 years, Supervisor Herity has been a leading partner uh, to the National Capital Lyme Disease Association and the public at large in the effort to bring awareness of Lyme and tick-borne diseases to Fairfax County. This proclamation today is of great benefit to the citizens of Fairfax County. It creates official recognition of the problem, encourages Virginians to learn and take seriously tick-borne illnesses, to take aggressive preventive measures, and to seek early treatment. So to Supervisor Herity and the board, we salute you for your continued concern and unwavering dedication to this cause. Today, I'd like to take an extra minute uh, to make a special announcement. This year, the Virginia legislature passed bill, House Bill 850 into law, creating the Lyme Disease Education and Awareness Act. As we all know, Lyme disease has been a serious and prevalent issue in our community and across the Commonwealth for a long time now. What started as predominantly a Northern Virginia issue has now spread the length of the Shenandoah Valley and is adversely affecting the health of thousands of Virginians. This recently passed act requires the, De the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation to create and distribute, distribute, excuse me, age appropriate educational materials on Lyme disease awareness and prevention for use in all, and I emphasize the word all, public schools public libraries, 
and state parks across the Commonwealth. Uh, NatCap Lime was happy to partner with Delegate David Reed on this important legislation. Virginia is now one of the first states in the nation to implement this law. For many years, our organization has been advocating to fill a void that exists today in public and private schools concerning the lack of classroom education about ticks, the diseases they carry, and how to prevent being exposed to them. Children ages 5 through 19 represent close to 30% of the reported 476,000 cases that the CDC reports annually. This risk is due to the amount of time children spend playing outdoors and the lack of importance of finding and removing ticks. Most school curriculums do not include a tick awareness program or a prevention program. I would like each of you, and we have brought today packets of a educational series called Tick Busters, Wanted Dead or Alive, that has been endorsed by Governor, our former Governor Ralph Northam, who was a pediatrician, he's still practicing, I believe, and also the series is a winner of the 2021 U.S. Department of Health and Human Services National IMEX Education and Awareness Healthathon contest. So it comes very qualified uh, and certified. We are presently distributing these materials to schools and districts and health departments throughout Virginia. We hope you take the time to examine the Tick Busters packet and see how it could be effective in Fairfax County to prevent young people from being exposed to a potentially serious illness and that you will also consider using it as an educational resource for our Fairfax County Public Schools. Thanks again to Supervisor Herity and to the Fairfax Board of Supervisors for their support all these years by making these proclamations to highlight the importance of Lyme disease awareness. One of my favorite quotes is by Helen Keller that says, alone we can do so little, together we can accomplish much. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much uh, for your comments and your advocacy, much appreciated. Um, at this time, I think we're ready for a photo. If you all wanna come forward and face the audience. <laughs> 